What's up guys, Tim Little. Welcome back to Tactical Bass. In today's video, we're talking about fishing line and the best fishing line to use in different situations. You know, there's so many different kinds of line on the market, so many different brands, monofilament, fluorocarbon, braided line. Today's video, we're talking beginner to advanced, which lines to choose in different situations. Let's go. Maybe you guys are like me. When I first got started, I wandered down my uh, the line aisle of my local tackle shop, and it, I was just amazed how many different types of line there were, how many different boxes and colors and styles. What is monofilament? What is fluorocarbon? What is braided line? When do I use which? So today's video uh, is kind of feeding off of last week's video about the easy knots for you guys to tie. Went in depth, showed you guys how to tie some certain knots. Uh, how to connect baits with good knots, how to connect leaders, braid to fluorocarbon, braid to monofilament. So today's video, we're going to talk about the different types of line and when I like to use the different styles of line. So we're talking about fluorocarbon, monofilament, and braided line. Those are the three major categories. There, there are a couple different styles of line, but three major categories we're talking about today. But uh, like I said, when when you walk down your local tackle, sh local tackle shop's line aisle and you just see the wall of pegs of different brands, different styles of line, it can get a little overwhelming. So today's video, I'm just going to walk you through when I use certain lines and why and when I use a combination, of maybe a braid to leader, um, even in crystal clear water. So we're going to kind of go through the, the whole gamut of of when I use different lines, and then we'll get into more some more advanced stuff talking about different lines that are um, made sp for specific techniques. So let's start off with the beginner fisherman, and, and you want to get into fishing. Now, I would say hands down, your best line to go with would be some monofilament. It is the most forgiving. It is the mo. It doesn't have memory. What I mean by memory. A lot of fluorocarbon has uh, kinks in it. It has, it has memory. You got to stretch it out if you really want it straight. Uh, memory is something when a line is on a, a spool too tight or wound too tight or just has been on a, a reel for a long time, you get kind of that springy kind of look when you go to cast and it kind of blows up. So monofilament is very easy to manage. Little tip for you guys. If you take your spool of line and you put it under warm water in your kitchen sink, It'll actually take that memory away. Uh, that was a little trick I learned as a, as a kid to help um, deal with some of that memory. But monofilament, if you guys are just getting into fishing and wanting to try it out, go get yourself a spool of you know seven or probably eight to 10, 12 pound monofilament line, depending on the, the type of fishing you're gonna be doing. But that will cover most finesse techniques. Now, when you get into top water fishing, we'll start talking about a little bit different line you should get. But if you're just starting out, go get yourself a line of monofilament. I really like the um, the Maxima Ultra Green. You know, this is a line that I've used for several years, Matt, several more years than I have, and uh, had a lot of success. They're smaller diameter lines. You know, they're six pound test all the way up to 30 and 40 pound test for stripers. But uh, go get yourself some line, some monofilament line, and you guys will be set. Now, if you're looking to do some more like finesse fishing, some, some type of fishing where you're in clear water and uh, you're worried about line visibility, water clarity, fish seeing your line, that is where you're gonna step up into fluorocarbon. Fluorocarbon is like 99% invisible underwater. So if you are a tournament fisherman, you are worried, you know, you're just, you don't have confidence in the monofilament as a finesse line that's when you're going to go get yourself some fluorocarbon you can see right here i have a plano line spool box with different line diameters different pound tests of fluorocarbon typically it's going to be four five six eight ten and twelve sometimes i'll throw seven in there but not not very very often so again four five six eight ten and twelve those are my leaders um and i'll, I'll get to that in just a second but if you're going to be doing mainly uh, finesse fishing in clear water, get yourself some fluorocarbon. The difference between fluorocarbon and monofilament, 
Monofilament has a lot more stretch. It's more forgiving, like I said earlier, but fluorocarbon is more dense. It doesn't have a lot of stretch. So in turn, it makes it more sensitive. So when you're finesse fishing and you're fishing a worm down on bottom and you want more sensitivity, that is where you're gonna go with the fluorocarbon line. Now, if you guys are shopping at a local tackle shop, you guys can go in and most shops will have a, a line section. They'll actually have a line counter where they'll, they'll spool your reels and stuff. Talk to one of the guys behind the, the desk. He'll, they'll be able to help you uh, pick the line that you're gonna want spooled on, on maybe your new reel or a, a reel you've had for a while, you're getting re-spooled. But go talk to the line guy. But typically monofilament is gonna be more forgiving Fluorocarbon is going to be less forgiving. It's going to have more memory. You're going to want to stretch it out, uh, but it's going to be more sensitive. So you're going to have more feel when you're fishing it, and the fish aren't going to be line shy. They're not going to be spooked from seeing that line coming through the water with the bait attached. So you're, if you're fishing a, a lake that's heavily pressured, a, a, a clear creek or a clear pond for that matter, that might have, have a lot of pressure from the neighbors or su and such, Go with some fluorocarbon because you will have more sensitivity. The fish won't be line shy and uh, you'll catch more fish. Now the third line that I'm going to mention today and then we'll kind of go into the different scenarios uh, is going to be braided line. Now you guys know that Matt and I, we absolutely love braided line and we throw it probably about 95% of the time and there's more than one reason for that. Uh, first reason it's so much more durable than monofilament or fluorocarbon. You know, it's braided line. It's actually threads that are wo woven together. Some are, you know, seven strand, some eight strand. So it's going to be more resilient. It doesn't have any stretch at all. So you get a lot more sensitivity. And that fish bites, that sensitivity just travels through that braid with that no stretch so much better than monofilament. And durability, like I said, um, it lasts forever. You can spool up a, a, a spool of braid and it can last you four, five, six months before you actually have to spool up another reel or you know put different braid on. It just is more durable, less stretch, more resilient, and better sensitivity. So that's why we typically use braided line. Now we do we do run leaders, and like I said last last week when I did that that knot tying video on how to tie knots. Um, that's where those knots are going to come into play. Tying, you know, having your braid as the main line on your reel and then putting a monofilament leader so you do have a little bit of stretch on there, but you still get the sensitivity kind of combination, combining the two to get the best of both worlds. So typically braid, where you're going to throw straight braid, this is your power fishing technique. So even you beginners, you can throw braid on your on your your spinning, uh, spinning rod combos, your, your bait casting combos. If you're gonna be throwing, uh, say you're pond fishing, you're throwing top water, or you're throwing a, a weightless Senko into toolies or bull rushes or, or uh, slop, that sort of stuff, and your fish aren't line shy, that's where you're gonna throw straight braid because you're gonna be able to hook those fish and get them out of that stuff. If you're frog fishing, you know, heavy flipping cover, that's where you're gonna use your straight braid. So that's kind of the three categories I'm going to talk about. Um, hopefully you guys kind of understand the monofilament, the, uh, the fluorocarbon, and the braid. One other thing with monofilament and fluorocarbon that's very key, monofilament typically floats. It's more buoyant in the water, whereas fluorocarbon sinks. So what you don't want to do is go throw a topwater bait on fluorocarbon because it, you're just going to have a lot of issues. So typically throw either braid or monofilament for your topwater baits, fluorocarbon for your subsurface baits, and braided line for your power fishing. Now again, I mentioned a little bit earlier that we throw braided line pretty much 95% of the time. And there are some exceptions to that, and I wanna explain those real quick, and then we'll go on to, to leaders and when I use mono and, and uh, fluorocarbon. So you guys know that Matt and I, we travel the country, we fish a lot of different fisheries, we fish a lot of highly pressured waters. You know, we fish a lot for world records. Uh, specialty fish, big fish, clear water, heavy pressure. And what we've noticed is sometimes straight fluorocarbon, even though you're giving up a little bit in sensitivity, 
you get more bites. And uh, so much so that earlier this year on Clear Lake, we were actually cranking with straight fluorocarbon and the water was re really clear, a lot clearer than normal. You know, I was reading a, a, a write up that it was the clearest it's been in 50 years. So those fish aren't used to that clear water. They aren't used to be able to see your bait coming from so far. And uh, we noticed that we were getting more bites with straight fluorocarbon. Now, typically why we crank, in this instance, why we would crank with braid to leader, uh, in previous videos, we've showed how we like to burn, 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 pause, burn, 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 pause, get real reactive with that bait. If you're trying to do that with mono, that line is stretching and giving, so you're not getting as crisp actions as you would with um, fluorocarbon, and even more so with braid to leader, uh, that's why we typically crank with, with braid. But in this scenario, clear water, we are getting more bites with the fluorocarbon. And uh, you know, there's a lot of great companies that make good line. I typically throw Sunline, Maxima, Power Pro, and uh, Suffix. Those are kind of the four brands that I, I throw. But in this case, the Sunline, this is actually a fluorocarbon that... Um, a lot of technology, a lot of the best lines come out of Japan. They have a lot of uh, coatings, different ways to make the line. I don't want to get too scientific into it to overwhelm you, but there are things that you can do to change the specifications on line, give them different coatings and stuff to make them act like different types of line. So I was actually using this S, uh, Sunline F FC crank and it's fluorocarbon, but it has more stretch than normal fluorocarbon. So that is a, a scenario where I would use a specialty line. If you guys want to keep it simple, stupid, you know, just get yourself a spool of a fluorocarbon, a spool of braid line, and a spool of monofilm, and that will work for 99% of the things. If you guys are more in depth and you want specific line for specific techniques, that's kind of what we'll talk about here shortly. So another another line that um, typically I'm, I'm going to talk about Clear Lake, but this is actually Chickamauga. Um, you know that there's big bass in both those fisheries and uh, both fisheries kind of have stained water, a lot of pressure. Um, typically, I would flip or punch with braided line, heavy braided line, 50, 65, sometimes 80 pound braided line. Okay. Pressured situations, you start getting that little clear situation. That's where you're going to want to go with a FC flipping now this line is made you can see it's 22 pound test it's made to uh, handle those heavy fish in that heavy cover it's got a little bit more abrasion resistance on it so you're not going to necessarily come over that log and break off like you might with some of the lighter stuff or uncoated stuff but uh, that is a situation where i would use the specialty line so when you are walking down your tackle shop and you see just that wall of line there is a reason to it and there is some science behind it and why there are so many different choices. But again, if you want to keep it simple, get yourself some braided line. Uh, Max Quattro, fabulous stuff. Finesse line, finesse braided line. I'll typically go with Sunline SX1 and uh, I'll leave it at that. Monofilament, I said the, the Maxima Ultra Green, very good stuff. Um, Seaguar makes some good stuff. And then fluorocarbon again I was I typically use the FC sniper I've had a lot of lot of success and uh, I just have a lot of confidence in that line uh, Matt really likes the assassins more of a abrasion resistance line and uh, again I really like this FC crank but in the past both Matt and I have really liked that Seaguar that uh, a braze X you know for cranking and stuff but as you can see there are so many different lines on the market gets a little confusing but uh, the the different quality or the different characteristics of line is very important depending on how how nerdy or how geeked out you want to get about your fishing or how how much success you want to have yes you can throw fluorocarbon on a topwater bait if it's the only rod you have right there's always ex exceptions to the rule but given the circumstances and the right line you're gonna have more success now, braid to leader. This is where it gets a little bit tricky because we really like to throw braid to leader, as mentioned before. If I am fishing uh, clear water, 
you know, let's say Lake Michigan, 30, 30 foot plus visibility. Typically, I will still throw braid to leader. I'm gonna go braid to a fluorocarbon leader, but I'm gonna tie my, my uh, uni to uni knot and I'm gonna leave a leader that's 25, 30 feet deep. My leader length changes depending on the depth of the water that I'm going to be fishing. Now the reason for that, two things. One, I want that sensitivity of braid. And yes, there is a longer leader, but I still have that connection to my main line that is gonna transfer that sensitivity through that braided line and into my hand, my reel seat, and I'm gonna feel those subtle bites. But two, I get the benefit of having a uh, uh, almost an invisible leader in that deep water so those fish don't get line shy. You know, I don't want to have braided line down there. And when I'm talking about braided line, I typically throw, on my finesse setups, I typically throw some kind of brighter line. I don't want this down there with a four foot leader where they're seeing this chartreuse line coming through, you know, 30 foot viz. It's gonna scare the fish away. So the reason that I use a colorful or bright finesse line is for weightless fish, uh, weightless bait techniques. If I'm throwing a, a Senko or I'm skipping something up underneath the dock that's that's weightless and it's falling, I'm going to be watching my connection knot. It's, it's almost like a strike indicator for like fly fishing, right? You're watching that float, that strike indicator come down. Same thing. I'm watching that connection knot. I can see this line. I can see it jump. I can shoot, shoot forward or lay slack onto the water. I know that I just got picked up and that fish came to me. So that's why I typically run a colorful finesse braid. Now power fishing braid, I usually go green natural. Um, just sometimes I'll even take a Sharpie and, and color it black. But uh, braid to leader, sometimes if we're throwing big baits, not sometimes, all the time if we're throwing big baits, typically we are throwing 65, 80 pound braid to a 20, 25, 30 pound monofilament leader. Now the benefit of that, I get the sensitivity and the reaction of the braid. You know, that real quick, if I'm throwing a glide bait, I get those real quick twitches to get that bait real reactive. If I'm doing straight mono, it's just gonna kind of stretch and give. Um, so braid to, braid to mono, I want that reaction. I want that real quick, quick, crisp action. But when that fish eats and I set, I want that that kind of rubber band, that kind of stretchy monofilament to give before I load up on that fish. That way I don't just explode the knot or explode the fish's mouth, anything like that. I want that give. That is where I will use monofilament. Now you could get away with throwing that big glide bait out on straight mono. It's just gonna feel really whippy and really stretchy and you're gonna lose a lot of sensitivity. But uh, you guys, braided line, is is very easy to manage you know we we talk to people all the time that have made the switch and it's it's easy you guys once you learn your connection knots once you learn to trust your knots um it's very easy to make that transition you get a lot more life out of your line you know some of these fluorocarbons you'll see in tournaments we're, we're stripping or, or guys are stripping their line off after every day of fishing and that can get very very expensive so if you put some braided line on there use it for a few months you just saved yourself a ton of money, but you also get more durability, more sensitivity, and uh, no memory or um, just easier line management. So braided line, if you can, make the switch. Start off in your finesse techniques. Start off with your, your drop shot rods and your, your shaky head rods, your, your weightless Senko rod, start off tying a fluorocarbon leader, and I think you guys will really uh, enjoy the sensitivity, the fill, the castability, and everything that's involved with braid to leader. Now a couple other lines, uh, the Cephex 832 braided line is awesome. I don't have any with me right here. Um, it is a smooth braid. Now that comes into play, typically I'm frogging and flipping with FX2, little more stout of a braided line. But if I want a smooth braid, say I'm throwing a buzz bait or, or something like that where I don't want that real, this line, I know you guys can't see, but it, it's got some, it, it's it's wrapped, right? So it's got some, 
it's not smooth. It's got a little bit of uh, resistance coming through the water. And, and the fish can pick up on that sometimes. So if I'm throwing a buzz bait or something where I'm going to be fishing a lot of, of on the surface stuff or just below the surface stuff, I will go with a smoother braid. That 836, uh, 832, that suffix 832 is really good braid for that. But uh, typically, this is my lineup. Um, I'm sure I missed something because there is a ton of, uh, to learn about line, but I, I don't want to go too in depth and, and confuse the, the beginners, but I also don't want to skimp out on some of the more advanced stuff. One other line that I really want to talk about is the FC, the, the, um, this is the FC 100 from Sunline. This is a saltwater line. We really start playing around with it when we were chasing those big stripers with big swim baits and glide baits. We felt like some of the clear water we were fishing, they were line shy to that big mono and uh, ventured out into the saltwater category and have really fallen in love with this, this big leader, this big fluorocarbon. Um, sometimes it's a little pain to tie, especially if you're throwing 35 or 40. That's when we'll go away from the uh, double blood and go with the uni to uni. But Awesome. It's it's invisible like fluorocarbon, but you get the uh, the benefit of using braid to leader, so you get the real crisp reaction uh, twitches on your glide baits, and uh, it's invisible, so the fish aren't as easily uh, scared away from from seeing the line in the water. So if you guys feel like your your fish are line shy, you big bait fishermen, you're fishing pressured water with your your swim baits, your glide baits, definitely try out that FC 100. But guys, there is fishing line. In a nutshell, I know we talked about a lot of different lines. Just to wrap it up for you, if you want to keep it simple, go out and get yourself a spool of fluorocarbon, a spool of monofilament, and a spool of braid. Throw your mono if you're just messing around or you're throwing top water. If you're power fishing, get yourself some braided line and really jack those fish out of cover. And if you're finesse fishing in clear water, pressured fish, that's when you'll rig up your fluorocarbon. If you guys have any questions, please leave those down below in the comments section. I'm sure you will kind of flew through the different categories, the different scenarios, but down below in the comments section, leave those. We'll get to those as soon as possible. If you guys learned something from this video, give us a thumbs up. Remember to subscribe to our channel. We do three videos a week for you, simply teaching to help you guys catch more bass. As always, guys, we appreciate you. Have a good one.